Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Ken here from MV Homestead and welcome to Model Railroad Mondays. Um, I'm hoping to get a video at least once a month, maybe twice a month out. Uh, if you're new to the channel, um, I'm getting back into model railroading. Uh, I do HO scale and I'm going to start off by showing, uh, showing you um, not always my ideas, but ideas that were out there and I'm tagging along and whoever thought of these ideas uh, that I'm repeating or whatever, thank you. Um, I have a very, very small subscriber base right now. I'm hoping it expands a little bit, but I'm getting these uh, videos out. Today, I want to avoid some confusion when you're wiring your train layout. Um, I will be using DCC, which is Digital Command Control, and it has to be wired very specifically. Uh, from what I've read, I've never used it. I'm no expert but I'm gonna try my best here. So what I did was I, I was thinking to myself, how can I keep the wiring straight? Uh, most model railroaders will use a color scheme to keep the wires straight, i.e. most of the time they use black and red wires for the main DCC bus, as they call it. Um, and that has to be, uh, the same rail uh, throughout, okay? So if you have your track, okay, and you let's say uh, you're, you're labeling it as one rail, rail red, one rail black, this rail, through these rails, as they go throughout your layout, all have to be the same. And I'll show you in a little bit how that might change or how you can get disoriented and not keep that straight. So I didn't think of this idea um, all on my own. Um, other people have done it, made videos about it. I'm doing the same thing. So what I did was I took a old piece of rolling stock and I just spray painted it. Now there's a bajillion videos out there on how to spray paint, so I didn't show you that. But I just took the stock and I, I, I spray painted it. Was, it was blue as you can tell. I think it was, it was blue to begin with, as you can see on the one edge. And I just sprayed one half black, one half red. So what I do is I started all with red and then I put a piece of tape down the ones down the middle of it, some uh, painter's tape and then I sprayed the black. I started with the red, you spray the darker color over the lighter color, and voila, you have that. What I did on the inside is I added some extra weight, okay? Um, that way when you're pushing this thing around, without these weights, this would be very lightweight. Yes, there is a little piece of, piece of metal in there, but it would be very light and it might fall off the track. And if you don't remember which rail is the red one, then you're back to, okay, you gotta find a dropper wire, find out which rail it is, remember where, and take your finger, however you're gonna do it, keep it straight. Well, other people have done this, and it has worked, and I am going to do the same thing. Because uh, I am, as I've told people, I am that guy that will get this messed up. So, all you do is get your car back together again. Uh, this one is kind of weak, so it uh, doesn't go together right away. So, let me get this back together and we'll move over to the track. Okay, I got the car on the track. I'm going to move behind the camera and continue, continue to talk and show you how this works. All right, so I have the car on the track, as you can see, or the stock on the track. And what it does is it allows you to keep that red 
wherever it's going. Okay, so wherever it goes on the track, whatever side is facing, is always the red rail. Okay, that way if you get disoriented, you get on the wrong side of the track as you're laying it, this car just follows you around and you know where your red wires have to go and the black wires have to go. It, DCC is not a positive negative thing because the current going through the track is actually AC not DC so they described it as an active rail and an inactive rail basically you just use red and black and or whatever colors you're using but as long as you keep it consistent throughout ie the red on one side black on the other and if you like I said, they have the added weight, so now I can push this, and it doesn't really want to fall off the tracks too well. So that's kind of a good thing. Okay, so that's my take on the wiring for DCC train layouts. Um, me personally, um, I've been watching a lot of videos. I've mentioned four channels already in the first episode. They all follow a similar pattern. Um, they keep two colors just for the track and then use other colors for uh, their accessories. Um, I did notice that if you have any turnouts or switches or points or whatever, whatever you call them, um, there's a little spot on that thing and in a future video I'll go over that. Um, it's called a frog and that has to be wired very uh, specifically for DCC. Because as the if you use metal wheels and they cross the frog, the polarity can change. Again, they don't use polarity, but it's polarity, um, and it'll cause a short circuit and shut the train layout down. If you don't have it sectioned off to where okay, only this section is controlled by this, and this you can shut the whole layout down, and that it's not good. So. Um, that's hopefully in a future video once I get going into making my layout and wiring it, I'll be bringing you guys along hopefully. So uh, again, not my totally my idea. This is just my take on it. Um, just a piece of old rolling stock painted up so I don't make that mistake of crossing the wires or as they said in Ghostbusters, never cross the streams. So with that said, uh, thank you for your time. Appreciate you guys tuning in to watch these videos. Um, again, I'm no expert on this. I'm in the very beginning stages. I do take constructive criticism quite well. Um, so I'm always up for new tips and tricks and techniques and et cetera. So uh, leave them in the comments below, please. And I'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching.